There is, perhaps, no subject of more universal interest in the whole range of natural knowledge, than that of the unceasing fluctuations which take place in the atmosphere in which we are immersed. British Almanac at Cheltenham, where one drinks one's fill of folly and cold water. I danced last year my first quadrille with old Sir Geoffrey's daughter, her cheek with Summer's rose might vie. When summer's rose is newest, her eyes were blue as autumn sky, when autumn sky is bluest, and well my heart might deem her one of life's most precious flowers, for half her thoughts were of its sun, and half were of its showers. I spoke of novels, Vivian Grey was positively charming, and Armax infinitely gay, and Frankenstein alarming. I said Avia was chastely told, thought well of Herbert Lacey, called Mr. Banham's sketches bold, and Lady Morgan's racy. I vowed that last new thing of hooks was vastly entertaining and Laura said, I dote on books, because it's always raining. I talked of music's gorgeous fane, I raved about Rossini, hoped Tronzi would come back again, and criticized Piccini, I wished the chorus singers dumb, the trumpets more pacific, and eulogized Brocard's plawn, and voted Paul terrific. What cared she for Medea's pride, or Desdemona's sorrow? Alas! My beauteous listener sighed, we must have rain tomorrow. I told her tales of other lands, of ever-boiling fountains, of poisonous lakes and barren sands, vast forests, trackless mountains I painted bright Italian skies, I lauded Persian roses, coin similes for Spanish eyes, and jests for Indian noses I laughed at Lisbon's love of mass, Vienna's dread of treason and Laura asked me, where the glass stood, at Madrid last season I broached what year had gone its rounds, the week before, of scandal, what made Sir Luke lay down his hounds, and Jane take up her handle, why Julia walked upon the heath, with the pale moon above her, where Flora lost her false front teeth, and Anne her false lover, how Lord de B and Mrs L had crossed the seat together my shuddering partner cried oh seal how could they, in such weather, was she a blue, I put my trust in strata, petals, gases, a boudoir pedant I discussed the toga and the fasces a cockney muse, I mouthed a deal of folly from Endymion, a saint, I praised the pious zeal of Messrs. Way and Simeon, a politician, it was vain to quote the morning paper, the horrid phantoms came again, rain, hail, and snow, and vapour flat flattery was my only chance I acted deep devotion, found magic in her every glance, grace in her every motion, I wasted all a stripling's law, prayer, passion, folly, feeling, and wildly looked upon the floor, and wildly on the ceiling. I envied gloves upon her arm and shawls upon her shoulder, and, when my worship was most warm, she, never found it colder. I don't object to wealth or land, and she will have the giving of an extremely pretty hand, some thousands, and a living she makes silk purses, broiders stools, sings sweetly, dances finely, paints screens, subscribes to Sunday schools, and sits a horse divinely but to be linked for life to her. The desperate man who tried it might marry a barometer and hang himself beside it, 